Spirit break out in this house. Oh, come on, Spirit, break out in this house. We come to give God all the glory and all the honor on tonight. We said it before, and I'll say it again. This is the last Sunday, last Wednesday. So stand to your feet because I pray this is the last time we see chasing. Oh, come on, we're gonna leave it in 2020. Come on, here, somebody. Put your hands together like this. Y'all know y'all chasing after these stimulus checks, but I'm chasing after Jesus. Amen. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more come on and help me sing i'm chasing that no matter what because i need you more and more more and more i'm chasing no matter what because i need you more and more more and more more and more you more and more more and more oh put your hands together I'm chasing no matter what cause I need you more and more more and more who needed Jesus more this year I'm chasing after you yes God, I need you more and more, more and more, more and more, more and more, Jesus, more and more, more and more. Oh, come on, y'all know the words. So I'm chasing after you, I'm praising my way through, just to be closer to you, Jesus. I'm chasing after you, come on and help me say. Praising my way through, I'm my way through just to be closer. To be closer to you. I'm pressing my way through. I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing, chasing, chasing. I'm chasing after you. I'm praising my way through. To be closer, closer. How many wanna be closer? How many wanna be closer? I'm chasing, I'm chasing, chasing, chasing. I'm chasing after you, Jesus. God, I'm praising, I'm praising my way through. God, I wanna, I 
wanna be closer. God, I wanna, I wanna be closer. I'm chasing, I'm chasing, I'm praising, chasing, praising, chasing after you, Jesus. God, I'm praising my way through just to be, I wanna be closer. God, I need, I need to be closer. I'm pressing, I'm praising, I'm pressing, praising, chasing, I'm praising, I'm praising, I'm praising, chasing, praising. God, I'm praising my way through. God, I prayed, God, I praised, God, I chased, God, I need you. God, I need you. God, I want you more and more, more and more, Jesus. Say more and more for the last time. More and more. Oh, come on and lift your voice. Yes. Give God glory. Come on and give God some praise up in the house. I'm chasing my way through. I'm praising my way through more and more. God, I thank you. More and more. Come on, come on. More and more. More and more. Come on, come on. More and more, Jesus. More yes, and yes. more. God, we need you more and more. Yes, oh God. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for this opportunity, oh God. That you have given us the liberty through the spirit of the living God by the blood of Jesus Christ to gather in your name. That Lord God we are here to give you glory, honor and praise oh Lord God. We are laying aside every weight and every sin oh Lord God and pressing on into your goodness and mercy. Now God to you belong all glory, all honor and praise in Jesus name. Amen and amen. For those that have joined us by the way of live or Facebook, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who's given us the opportunity by his blood to gather in his name, to research his word, to look into his word for the life that he has in store for us. This is Bible study here at Christ Lit Tabernacle, and I am Pastor David Frederick coming to you from 1140 Benson Road, Garner, North Carolina. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior. God is truly good, ain't he? God is truly good, ain't he? Here at Christ Lit Tabernacle, I do not carry a word for the new year. I carry the word all year long. I don't have a new year's word. We've been learning and teaching what it is to carry a word for season or word. That's under the Levitical priesthood of Aaron, the priesthood that needed a word every year. So they enter into the holies of holies once a year to get something from God. And they often did these ceremonial things. So therefore, they look for God for certain things by God responding to them. We ain't going to go back through all the historical view that we looked at it through the word of God all the way back to Abraham. We saw the word of God that God has got a priesthood set aside for his people. Amen. And his people are called by his name. And so therefore we've been studying for the last couple of weeks, I think for the last three weeks, about the different types of priesthood. And there's actually only two that God has ordained. That's the Levitical priesthood of Moses got set by Aaron that God ordained through the Levites and the priesthood of Melchizedek. Oh, Lord, have mercy. After the order of Melchizedek, we are looking at that priesthood and hopefully tonight we can get into it and find our life. Amen. Amen. 
because under the Levitical priesthood, they had to do sacrifices. They did special ceremonies. They did special things to get God to move. But I'm not looking for God to move. God has moved, and I'm so therefore I'm moving according to him. They looked for God to move because they did certain things to move God, and God ordained that for a time and a season. Let me explain again the seasons, what I often hear when I'm looking, to, looking at preachers preach and teach the word of God. And oftentimes, I don't quite know why they do that, because we are not seasonal people. The people of God that are born into the Levitical priest and the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek are not seasonal people. Let me explain to you what seasonal preachers do. Seasonal preachers give you a word for circumstances and situations that may arise in your life. But God has given us an eternal word through Jesus Christ that affects every circumstance, every situation, every season, and every time. What has happened is when sin hit the earth, it knocked the earth on its axles or sideways and therefore creating seasons. Yeah. Therefore, it is the same way in the spirit. When you fell in sin, you went sideways. And therefore, now you are in a position where you are in a seasonal situation. You are in the four seasons here on the earth. So therefore, you experience God during seasonal moments. But the people of the living God are not seasonal people. Uh oh, And therefore, we got to get away from that kind of teaching because under that kind of teaching was the law. And therefore, the law inhibits individuals from go growing because the scripture says under the law, it was tutors and governors given to the children of Israel because of disobedience. Therefore, it stunt their growth. Now, what that means is that the word of God found out where they were wrong, found out what they didn't do right, found out their attitude was wrong, found out their credibility was wrong, and it caused them to be discriminated from the world and therefore isolated them from spiritual growth. I'm covering a lot so that we can get to Melchizedek. So therefore, under that Levitical priesthood, you only had babes. You only have individuals that could not comprehend God, that could not comprehend what God was doing, why he was doing it, and when he was doing it. They only did things according to what they believed they needed God to do. So therefore, it limited them in their activity with God. Therefore, they can only get from God what they physically needed. Let me say that again. They only got from God what they physically needed. And oftentimes we have believers in that same vein today. They only go to God what they physically need. Therefore, you are subject to the Levitical priesthood. That means that you are trying to observe special opportunities, special seasons, special occurrences, special times, going to church every Sunday, going to church every Wednesday, so that you can stay in the order to receive from God what you need in the flesh. But now we're going to move away from that priesthood because the scripture said get rid of the bond woman. We ain't got time to work that, so let me move fast with that. The bond woman was the, uh, Abraham's servant that has his wife gave to him to have a child. When God promised him a child through his own wife, it was Isaac, and now he had a, woman, had a child through a bond woman, meaning here that there was a woman of slavery. And what it means, the woman here is talking about the church, a people that belong to God that are in a slavery mentality. Amen. They only get from God what they physically need. Therefore, they don't grow spiritually. They don't grow in the spirit of the living God. They don't rule and reign as God has predestined them to be. Because when Abraham met Melchizedek, Melchizedek told Abraham that he served the God that ruled heaven and earth. Meaning he had unlimited power working behind him. But because he could not comprehend, therefore he said, God, I don't have a child. So he draw God into his limitations. Y'all with me? But the Levitical priesthood did not come out of Abraham. It came out of his children of disobedience. Therefore, it hindered all that God wanted to truly do in their lives because of disobedience. Somebody with me? Now, if you want to know all that, go back and go back and listen to the last set. Uh, I think it was the last three Bible studies that we've done and get a little bit more insight and scriptures. We don't want to go back all over that again. I don't know about you, but I want to go into what Melchizedek brought. 
I want to go into what that priesthood brought us because that priesthood is the priesthood that Jesus came through. Now, people say, well, he still was of the Levitical priesthood. No, he was not. He came out of the tribe of Judah, which was not named of Moses to be a priest. Only Levitical, the Levitical priesthood or the Levitical people were for the priesthood. Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah, which is praise unto God. Praise here is praise what God does and what God can do before he does it. That's what Judah mean, praise. And for the right understanding, Jesus came out of that tribe through the order of Melchizedek, through an eternal power that was working on our behalf. Yes. Now, to get us up to speed is that Jesus Christ did not die like the other priests did. It's very significant because that's an indication that Jesus Christ was the priest of God and that was an indication that God is not changing his mind. The priesthood of the Levitical priesthood died, so therefore it changed the order. It changed the people that was leading. It changed the mind in which they sought God. But Jesus Christ did not die to stay dead. He rose from the grave, and now he got the eternal mind of God that's working on your behalf. That means that he's not limited to your sins. He's not limited to your abilities. He's not limited to your access. He's not limited to the thing. He has an eternal power, meaning the Godhead, God working with him to bring to pass what God has promised his people. Yes. Maybe that'll help somebody else along the way. If you remember, therefore, God promised Abraham. He said, the whole nation shall be blessed with you. That means there was a natural Israel and a spiritual Israel, but God has preordained that what he's going to do is going to be manifested in the Gentiles. Yeah. But because of the order of the order Mel Kipmissy, Pritmissy, um, Aaron, the Gentiles could not get the promise. It was always promised to the Gentiles. Uh-oh. I know I'm going to hurt somebody out there in their doctrine. I know I am. If you remember that God promised Abraham to be a blessing to him while he was uncircumcised. He was not circumcised when he spoke to him and said, come out from among them and I'll make you a great nation. He was a Gentile. He was not, did not become a Jew. Uh-oh. Most of it, now I'm getting ready to mess with some more theology here, is that the circumcision did not bring him to the point to be a Jew. That was a circumcision of the natural flesh. It did not make him a worshiper. Uh-oh. It was a covenant that God made with him so that God will made a promise. He couldn't swear by nobody greater, so he swore by himself. He said, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you, meaning regardless of you, I will bless you. But because Abraham did not have the mind of Christ, he couldn't walk into that destiny. Amen. Oh, let's get into some words because I feel somebody breathing down my neck. <laughs> Because the Levitical priesthood stunt your growth. You only looked at God for what you needed. And what you needed is nothing but what you wanted. Because you did not know how to ask for what you needed. God, I want to play with that some more, but we ain't got time. So we tonight, we want to go on into the order of Melchizedek. We want to go into the priesthood of Melchizedek. So I'm going to ask y'all to hang on real tight as we go. And this is our New Year service, y'all. To those that are joining us out there live, we will not be here tomorrow night. Amen. Amen. We, uh, uh, well, we might be uh, come and get your life. I'm not sure. My wife won't work that out. But anyway, but we won't be having a New Year service. So the word that I have for you is not a New Year's word. I want to make that real clear because oftentimes people are always looking for something new from God and ain't done what God had told you in the old. Right. They're always looking for something to tickle their fancy and they ain't even living what God has told them in the past. And that's a perfect indication of a child. 
You know a child and how they act. They get one new thing, they want another new thing. And they get another new thing, they want another new thing. You get one new thing, they want another new thing. These are called babes because they can't comprehend what they need, so therefore they try to only enjoy what they want. Does that make any sense? Yeah. But it's those that seek God that he's going to meet their need. What do you need not to die? Uh-oh. That's too far-fetched for some people in their imagination because they can't get past their new house, their new car, their new job. They can't get past that. If I had to have a job to die, I would rather stay alive and not have the job. If I had to die to get things, then therefore I'd rather not have things. I'd rather live. Now, but because of the order of Melchizedek, we can have it all. I want to make myself real clear. The reason I keep using that indication or using that note of not dying because a lot of people don't understand it, that there's no death in life. If life is in you, there's no assignment for you to die. Well, the scripture says it's appointed for man once to die. That's true, but not in the natural. How do I know that? Because the scripture says when you sin, you got to die to your sins in order to live righteous. That is the death that you should be looking for. Dying to sin. Oh, that's going to help somebody later on. If I got to die in the flesh to get right, there ain't no hope for me. Uh-oh. If I got to die in the flesh in order to be right, there is no hope for me. How do I know that? Because Jesus died in the flesh so that I can be right in the spirit. But if I don't access God to that, if I don't look to God for that, then I am, my dying is in vain. Uh-oh. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. And what that means for those, because the, we are in Bible study, y'all. Now, I want to make sure, let me, let me take my brief uh, 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 commercial break here for a minute. We are in Bible study for those that are joining us out there in social media. When Bible study, what we do, we go into the word and we find what God has for us, has for our life. That means I'm not looking for my life. I'm looking for the life that God has for me. For the just shall live by faith. That means that if you are saved, God wants to sanctify you. That God wants to separate you from the world. The only way that he can do that is renew your mind. A lot of people try to separate from the world in the flesh, but that's not possible. You got to be taken out of here for the, in order for that to happen. That's why they're looking for the rapture. But I ain't waiting for the rapture for my change or my separation. I'm going to let truth separate me. Does that mean I'm leaving the world? Absolutely not. That means that God is sanctifying me in the midst of darkness. God is causing me to be the light in the midst of corruption. God is calling me to be the joy of my, his salvation in the midst of crookedness. That's called kingdom. A lot of people saying kingdom is, is when we all come together as church as one. That's not kingdom. Jesus said the kingdom is within you. That means you and God have become one. It's a signification that you have been born again. Uh-oh. We're in Bible study, y'all. We're in Bible study, so we're going to work it. Turn with me. No, don't, don't y'all turn there. No, y'all turn, turn there later on. Let me go on and get some of this out of the way. Genesis, I want to make some points here. Genesis chapter 17, 10. This is my covenant which ye have kept, ye shall keep between me and you. He's talking to Abraham and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now, we know that because that's what he told Abraham to do. Now, when he told Abraham to do that, he circumcised him in his foreskin, in his genitals, in the natural. It didn't bring a spiritual change. Everything that was done in the natural, God had a spiritual meaning to it. Does this make any sense? So therefore, the scripture said, compare spiritual things with spiritual things. That's how you come to truth. When you rightly divine the word of truth truth you will get life does that make any sense that means when you apply the word of god the right way it will bring you life now let me help those that don't quite understand what the word means here circumcision was in the natural but god want to circumcise your heart 
He want to take out that selfishness. He want to take out that pride. He want to take out the lust of the flesh, the lust out of the pride of life. He want to take out the darkness and replace it with his son, Jesus Christ. Does that make any sense? Now, when you get saved, that circumcision doesn't happen automatically except in the spirit. So when it happens in your soul, the word of God comes to carve you out of you. Now, this is only under the order of Melchizedek. That means is that I'm responding to God, not God is responding to me. I'm letting his word take precedence in my life. Isaiah said, if you seek for your life, you shall lose it. But if you give your life to God, you will have it. Does this make any sense? I want to make myself really clear here tonight because oftentimes when we study the word, we study the word in a selfish mode. Therefore, we never see the spirit of God in the word. That's why we got teachers after the Levitical priesthood always got people hunting for themselves, hunting for a better job, hunting for a better marriage, hunting for more money. All these things don't add life to you. And that's why people don't understand when God said, don't love the world. That means that they have taken it. Well, you shouldn't have the things of the world. If that was true, you wouldn't be in the flesh. What that means is I should not have or rely on the things of the world for life. God knows you need these things to live. Living is not life. Okay. Living is not life. Living is when you need things to be to eat, drink, live, go somewhere, but that's not life. Life is when you have a relationship with God based on his level. Okay, I'm not I'm going to get too far here. I want to get some of this in here tonight. So let's go through some more word. Okay, so now in order to understand how this works, we have to get in another priesthood. We have to start listening to the word of God according to what God meant for it to be. Does this make any sense? Now, often people get caught up in saying, well, that's the doctrine of men. That's the doctrine of devils. But in this word, I'm teaching you to seek for glory Honor, immortality, and eternal life. Something only God can give. Listen, only God can give it. But you ain't got to go to heaven to get it. Heaven came down in Jesus Christ to you. God gave you access to him so that he can give you his glory, his honor, immortality, and eternal life. In mortality, you don't die. But that don't mean you don't, that don't mean you have life just because you don't die. You know Satan don't die. He has immortality, but he doesn't have life. Does that make any sense? Only God has life. And when he gave Jesus Christ, he gave his life to his son. To whoever believe in his son and follow his teaching will receive life. Yeah. Does this make any sense? Yeah. Life here is that you are sustained by the spirit. Uh-huh. Not by the things that are around you. Yeah. If you lived by the spirit, then the things around you will not affect you. The scripture says you can know the tree by its fruit, meaning that I can look at a believer and determine what they live by, by looking at their lifestyle. Uh-huh. Oh, the coronavirus made half of you go hide. You're not walking in the spirit. Now, am I saying don't wear no mask? That's not what I'm saying at all. That'd just be stupid. I'm not saying, I'm not, now see, I'm not telling anybody not to get the shot. I'm not telling anybody not to get the vaccine. I'm not saying that anyway. But none of those things are going to give me life. The coronavirus, from what I've heard, can destroy the natural body. But you're more than the natural body. So therefore, you need to listen to somebody who's going to address your soul. Because it's actually your soul that keeps you alive. Does that make any sense? 
It's actually your soul that keeps it. It ain't your husband. It ain't your job. It ain't your wife. It ain't your kids. It ain't your education or uneducation. It ain't poverty. It ain't none of that. It's your soul through the spirit of God, which is life, that keeps you alive. Does that make any sense? And you know you have life when missing things don't bother you. Listen to what I'm saying. You know you have life when you have access to everything, all the things, and but you don't need them. I try to explain that principle. I don't know if it was in, I think it was in my leadership class, where I used the example that, um, um, what was his name that had the, uh, Wilson, the movie about Wilson? Um, um, Tom Hanks, when he had, uh, you know, he was working as a carrier for FedEx and his plane got in an accident. And he crashed into the ocean and he ended up on the island all by himself. And it, he took weeks and months before he realized all I need to do is live. But in his mind, he wanted to get back to how he used to live. And that tormented him more than being on the island. Because on the island was enough food, enough water, enough surrounding to keep his body satisfied, but his brain tormented him. Why was his brain tormented? Because he wanted to get back to the way things were. Does this make any sense? He had enough food. He had enough water. He was okay. All that stuff was taken care of, but because of the way his mind was working, he actually started talking to a round ball. Start conversating with a round ball. Why? Because his brain wouldn't let the way he lived go. And his brain was about to kill him. Oh, y'all ain't. Go watch the movie. I know you. I hope for that to help somebody. What I'm trying to get you to is that we are talking and we are listening under several types of men. There's only two types of men that's from God. From the Levitical priesthood standpoint and the spiritual standpoint. The Levitical priesthood are concerned about what you need in the flesh. The Melchizedek priesthood is concerned about what your soul needs. Does that make any sense? I know you want a car, but I know you don't need it. Oh, God, it may help somebody because they're going to go from, well, I need a car to go to the, get to the job. That's not what I'm talking about. In order to keep your soul alive, you need a word from God. The word of God said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of his mouth. That means that God wants to give you life, and when he gives you, gives you life, things will come to you. Right. You ain't got to go get them. That's where this pride come from, seeing that if I have this, that makes me look better than you. I have this uh, 3,500 square feet house, and I'm laying in luxury and all this kind of stuff, and I invite you over so that you can see how I'm living. Why am I doing that? To give you life? No. To make you think I look good. I drive this nice car and I go by and, <laughs> let, me, let me use this case. I, this man of God was telling me one time about how he got his brand new uh, uh, car. I ain't going to tell you what it was. And I ain't going to tell you who he was. Anyway, and he used to drive downtown where he used to live at so that he can drive by the window and see himself driving in it. <laughs> there are people that do that. That gave him a feel good to the flesh. Now, am I saying there's something wrong with things? Absolutely not. There's nothing wrong with things. It's when you place them in the wrong place. How do I know that? By the kind of people that you listen to. If I have a church with 50 million people coming to it throughout the whole year, I'm going to wonder what they are listening to. When my Lord and, Je my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught, over 40,000 left him at one time. When he said, lest you drink of my blood and eat of my flesh, I ha you have no part with me. When they heard him say that, they packed their bags, they picked up their kids, and left him. Over 40,000 people at one time left him. 
So what if 12 people leave David Fedra? Oh, well. <laughs> so the coronavirus is just an indication of where you put your faith. But if I teach you what the scripture called truth, and there's one get it. Oh, my God, help me, Holy Ghost. If one get it. That is the whole reason he came and died. God said they might be just one. one. Y'all looking at me sideways. Uh -uh. What if you were that one? But you don't want to let go of your pride so that you can be that one. You don't want to let go of your arrogance so that you can be that one. You don't want to let you go that selfishness so that you can be that one. So let's get some word of God in here so that we can get some Melchizedek in the picture tonight. All right, Colossians 2.11 says it this way. And whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Colossians 2.11, Colossians 2 and 11 says it this way. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcisions made without hands. Do you anybody see that? Yes. That means the operation of God comes without physical effort. Yes, For people that can't quite get it, you ain't got to leave the club. Okay. If he ain't cut it out of you, there ain't no need to leave it. Yes. That's right. There's a reason why you're going to the club. Right. Wait me, y'all ain't messing with y'all. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help, help me, Holy Ghost. What we try to do is live for God. But through Jesus Christ, he said, I died for you. So you come to me believing that I'm God and I will operate on you. Stop trying to fix you and let him fix you. Let's read the scripture now. Watch this. Watch this. Let's read the scripture. He said, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Made without hands here, partner, are the traditions of men or the doctrine of men or the doctrines of devils, meaning that you got to look right to be right. If you got to look right, you already wrong. Because you might stink. The inward man is what God sees. Do you, not, do you not know that some of the greatest or some of the biggest, some people might want to be politically right this coming year, some women that sold themselves for money are the ones that God entreated. Y'all ain't getting that. Go read the Bible. The woman that, that, that put the spies up and hid them. The woman that the prophet married. Uh-oh. The woman that they brought to Jesus to stone her to death. Oh, y'all ain't with me. He met them right where they are. That means he want to do the operation. Yes. Yes. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I just got happy yes. all over again. Yes. I've been saved over 35 years now, and I'm getting happy all over again. Because he relied on his spirit through his word to get you right. Yes. And when you trust in the word, the word will get you right. Yes. But if you are taught that you got to be right in order to get right, you just lost your life. Oh, y'all ain't get me. When you put your faith in what he has done, he will do it. Y'all didn't catch that. He died for your sins. When you turn to him, he start operating. Do he stop when you stop coming? No. no, no. I ain't got time to prove that. I ain't got time because we're talking about the priesthood of Melchizedek. 
See, the operation that he done is that he has no hesitation in doing it because he's eternal in the flesh. That means he has rights to you even if you say no. Y'all ain't catch that. You are bought with a price. You're no longer your own. The reason you're not getting happy about it because you don't know who you serving. He knows what to do, when to do it, how to do it, how to fix it. But you'll jump when I say, well, God knows how to pay your bills. You'll jump about that. But what you don't know, he paid your bills before you got to the place of losing your house or losing your car. Because we don't understand how the priesthood work. We miss the blessing. This has already been done. If you're being taught from that point of reference, then you will see the light and the light will cleanse you. Well, let me. Everybody think different about what is wrong. Everybody think smoking is wrong. Everybody think drinking is small. Not, but some people here in America, I ain't going to say everybody. There's a lot of people got different things about different things. Let me share something with you. You don't know truth. You don't know righteousness. If you did, you would not be in the world. Because the scripture said you was born in sin and shapen in iniquity when you hit this planet. So therefore, you don't know him. So how are you going to fix yourself? So now I'm turning to him to trust him. When you are trusting him, you ain't worried about what nobody's saying. You ain't worried about that person getting on your nerve. You ain't worried about that her hollering in the background back there. Because you're looking unto him. But we're going we're gonna to pipe down a little bit so we can get it. Listen to what I'm trying to get across to you. Righteousness didn't come by the Levitical priesthood. That means the ordinances in which you need to do to get God to move. That's what that means. The things that you need to do to get God to move, that's not how righteousness came. Righteousness came that you acknowledge that he has done this. Because you got people don't live for that, they don't know how to teach from that. But you are dealing with someone who lived by that. Therefore, I can tell you about that. That's why I can have compassion on the ignorant. That's why I can have compassion on the, the, the naysayers. That's why I can have compassion on the workers of iniquity. That's why I can have compassion on the transgressor. You know why? Because my righteousness is not my own. I got it from him. If you knew that he gave it to you, you'll be glad to be it with somebody else. I can tell you you're not walking in his righteousness when you treat your brothers and sisters like trash. He went to the graveyard to find you. So why are you listening to the people that got gray clothes on? Watch this. And because you got grave clothes on, you don't know what it is to live. Amen. Say that, sir. I ain't got, God, there's too much in here. There's too much in here. Because the order of Melchizedek is to bring you the life of God. Listen to me and listening to me carefully, even out there in social media. When you entreat God, God entreats you. And you know it's him because something on the inside turns. It's not an emotion. It's not a reasoning. The problem is that when you feel that kick in your spirit, don't deny it's right to have you. Lord, I have sinned. Forgive me. Oh, God, I, I, this is not the way that we want to go with this tonight. But the order of Melchizedek is to get us out of darkness into the light. And when we get in the light, we can grow up. And that's what God is looking for. He's not looking for babies. He got enough babies. In that particular case, he's looking for uh, uh, um, uh, babysitters. 
And that's what most pastors have become, babysitters. Babysitters don't help you grow up. They just take care of you while you're there. Give you your bottle, give you your food, let you take your nap until the parents come and pick you up again. But that's how most pastors have become who they are because you don't want to grow up. And what will compel you to grow up is when you can see what he has for the adults of the house. Melchizedek or the order of Melchizedek or the priesthood of Melchizedek keeps pointing at what the inheritance is. But if you don't look to grow up, you don't have any idea of what that is. I know a lot of people that talk about it, but they haven't experienced it. You're looking at someone that have experienced it. That's why he said, I'm going to make you a minister and a witness of my power. See, when you're talking about something you experience, can't nobody change your mind? 